Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. We're back now with Laura Slattery, a peace activist and a Knights Out member, and John Forrett, commander of the Alexander Hamilton Post 448 here in San Francisco. John, let's, let's, let me ask you, um, what, you know, people have an idea of what don't ask, don't tell policy is, but there's a difference between what the, what the rules say, the law says, and how it's implemented out in the field. Maybe you can shed some light on that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, the actual policy is called don't ask, don't tell, don't harass, don't pursue. So what that says is you can't ask anybody and they can't tell. They're not supposed to be harassed if someone suspects, and you're not supposed to go after them if you suspect. Well, that's not the way it's being implemented. It's been everything has happened from actual soldiers or sailors being killed because they were suspected of being gay or actually known to be gay, all the way to people being discharged, whether they were straight or gay, because they were suspected. And I say straight or gay because one of the problems with the policy is women, for example, a good, I'd say it's supposed to be, believe, 30 percent of the women that have been discharged under the policy were straight women. But because they wouldn't sleep with their commanders, they were discharged as lesbians mm -hmm. to avoid the sexual harassment complaint that the female was going to file against their commanders. If that is, that's got to be a glaring uh, example of how bad it is. And the mistreatment and the injustices that go on daily um, and, in fact, because it's okay to gay bash or talk bad to gay people, then the commanders are overlooking people being abused or mistreated simply because they're suspected or known to be gay. Laura, you were in uh, Hawaii, I believe, uh, on active duty for several years after leaving uh, West Point. Is that correct? Yes. Over the years, you were in the academy and on active duty. Did you have friends who were subjected to this policy and, and booted out of the military? Yes, I did. Actually, the first person that I was dating, um, it wasn't actually this policy. It was before Don't mm -hmm. Ask, Don't Tell. Um, but this person was suspected of, of being lesbian, and they had a trial. And as she tells the story, 50 people were called to witness and testify. And all 50 of them lied and said, even though they knew she was gay, said she wasn't gay because they really thought she was a good officer and wanted to keep her in. And so when we talk about the heart of this policy and the heart of... Um, the don't ask, don't tell, it's really, it's a question of integrity. And it's not only the integrity of the gay soldier, but obviously the integrity of the rest of the troops as well. Well, it's amazing that they would uh, violate their own military code to, and lie in a, in a proceeding because they believed it wasn't a good policy or be, they believed in this person that was being accused. I think, yeah, I think probably both. Uh. We also had another person in our unit who was lesbian and everyone knew. And I remember one time we came back from a, a deployment in uh, Korea and... Uh, the first sergeant was joking about it, and the company commander didn't know what he was talking about. And uh, when we got off, the, I think it was the commo sergeant, met her lover at the, uh, we'd been gone for a month, and she, you know, her lover greeted her at the airport. The, everyone knew, the first sergeant knew, all the troops knew. No one did anything about it. And so it's the in-equal application uh, of the policy as well. Um, one other point on that, I think the statistics show, and, and maybe you know better than I, uh, I think that according to one study, African-American women are twice as likely to get kicked out under don't ask, don't tell as white women. Hmm. Does that mean there are twice as many African-American lesbians as white women? I don't think so. This speaks I think, to the again, disparity. Exactly. And the unequal application of the policy. Hmm. John, you said something earlier about how you thought that perhaps of the gays and lesbians out in the military, active military now, that 90% of them are, are essentially out to their fellow soldiers or maybe even their, their officers, their, their commanders, uh, but w are they not being uh, persecuted or, or accused? Well, actually, and something I wanted to touch on, too, it's also the younger command officers and the younger rank and file they're dealing with. Yes, I've talked to some, some uh, soldiers returning from both Iraq and Afghanistan, and they told me that, that one of them was gay. He said that he was out to his unit and to everyone, and then he knew of others, and the other one knew of others as well. They were out and open with their commanders and everything, because these people are in small groups, and they're, every day their life is on the line, so they know everything about each other and nobody cares 
nobody cares. And that number, 90%, is a very accurate number. Now, there is a small percentage that do hide their homosexuality because of their security clearances and whatnot. And that has to go with, for example, the, the Arab linguists that were discharged because they were gay. They, were, they had the, the, the high security clearances. They had $4 million worth of education on the taxpayer's dime. But they were still thrown out because someone didn't like them. And... I mean, so it is disparaging, like she said. It's, some people are, are favored and some are not. But nobody seems to care. However, I said about the rank and file being younger, the older guard, that's what you're hearing. These generals are the old guard, the old folks. They still got it stuck in their head that, hey, you know what? All my life I've been told that homosexuality is immoral, it's, it's dangerous, it's bad for you, it's bad for my children. So they're thinking it's bad for the, the armed forces. But frankly, the folks that are serving with or are gay don't seem to care. So Laura, when you hear uh, some of these generals get up before Congress and say, you know, it would be uh, hurtful to morale to have soldiers, uh, for example, showering gay and straight together, uh, does that say they're out of touch to you? It does. It definitely says they're out of touch. And if you've been listening to the Senate hearings, Senator McCain is making a big deal about the thousand flag officers who've written uh, a letter wanting to continue the don't ask, don't tell policy. There's also a hundred flag officers who are calling for the repeal. But I think, again, that just speaks to, it's, a, it's another army. It was a, a, a different time. And as you can see by watching this film, mm. right, they were different times, and, and now are different times, and the soldiers are ready to serve openly with gays and lesbians. Does that make you think, John, that, that, that now is the time after all these years? To yes, that? I think now is the time, and we have the right folks in, in place. And she just touched on something I wanted to talk about. It is interesting how the politicians and these, these, these high-ranking officials are flip-flopping. John McCain, during his campaign for president, specifically said that if, if, if on the question of don't ask, don't tell, if, he was, if it was told to him as the commander-in-chief that don't ask, don't tell needs to go away because it's bad for the union. I mean, it's bad for the country, it's bad for national security, that he would agree with those recommendations. But today, he's not saying that. He's saying he's sticking with those rank and file that are coming out and saying, oh, no, 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 this is a bad time, this is the wrong thing to do. And he's saying, yeah, he 100% agrees with that. So another thing that's happening, you're seeing, is politicians and these high-ranking officials, they're running scared because they know that if they blow their whistle the wrong way, then maybe they're going to lose favor. So they're, they're, they're living a hip, they're being hypocrites is what they're doing right now. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.